This is CBN News Watch. And thank you for joining us. I'm Ephraim Graham. President Trump has called off the nuclear summit with North Korea scheduled for next month, citing its tremendous anger and open hostility towards the United States. Now the big question is, what's next? Jennifer Wishon is at the White House with more on this story. A bold move by President Trump, a letter to Kim Jong-un canceling the leader's planned nuclear summit. He surprised the world, but the Trump administration saw it coming for days. North Korea has the opportunity to end decades of poverty and oppression by following the path of denuclearization and joining the community of nations. After Secretary of State Mike Pompeo's meeting with Kim that resulted in the release of three American prisoners, the North Koreans failed to keep their promises. It's not about the deal. It's about the outcome. Right? It, it's about achieving this permanent physical change and transformation that will have the opportunity to change the world. After Trump's announcement, North Korea seemed to change its tone. A top official saying the Kim regime is open-minded in giving time and opportunity to the U.S. But for now, the Trump administration is continuing its maximum pressure campaign, crippling economic sanctions meant to force concessions out of a nation already facing financial despair. But in these hours following the president's letter, Harry Kazianis with the Center for National Interest says he fears the North will return to testing missiles. God forbid, if the North Koreans test a missile in the next couple of days and you know, there's a malfunction, the missile lands in, in Seoul, or in Japan or over Guam, we could be at war. And that type of war would, would involve millions of people dead. Time, he says, isn't on Kim's side, as his people are more exposed to influences from the world outside North Korea, they may learn there's a better way. That's what happens when you actually get in on these situations. You start to give people hope something can be different. They start to press for it. A senior White House official says the ball is now in North Korea's court. If and when Kim Jong-un chooses to engage in constructive dialogue and actions, I am waiting. Jennifer Wish on CBN News, the White House. And here now is a look at some of the other big headlines we're following for you inside the CBN newsroom. President Trump says he will block any immigration bill that doesn't include what he calls a, quote, real border wall. A group of House Republicans is trying to push through a measure that would include a provision to protect children of illegal immigrants. But the president told Fox News he won't sign any bill without very strong border security. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says he'll refuse to bring up any bill without the president's support. House Democrats are upset a White House attorney attended a classified briefing Thursday on the FBI's Russia probe. Emmett Flood was there at the start of the meeting but did not stay. Republicans say the FBI and the Justice Department have refused to turn over documents to Congress that they have a right to see. And they want to know what role the Obama White House may have had in reported FBI spying on the Trump campaign in 2016. And Hollywood mogul Harvey Weinstein is expected to surrender to police today to face sex abuse charges. The charges relate to a former actress, Lucia Evans. She accuses Weinstein of a sexual assault in 2004. A number of women have claimed the film producer harassed or assaulted them. More than 90, in fact. Weinstein says all the encounters were consensual. Remember, you can find more on these stories throughout the day at CBNNews.com. An armed citizen shot and killed a mass shooter at an Oklahoma restaurant Thursday. The unidentified shooter entered Louis on the lake and fired his gun before being shot dead by a handgun-carrying civilian in the parking lot. Two young women were shot during the incident, but they are expected to recover. The incident follows a shooting last month at a Tennessee Waffle House where a citizen confronted and disarmed a gunman. Police are searching for two male suspects after 15 people were injured by a bomb in Canada. The improvised explosive device was set off inside an Indian restaurant in suburban Toronto Thursday night. Police have released a photo of the two men who walked into the restaurant shortly before dropping IEDs and fleeing. Three people were seriously hurt in that explosion. Police say there is no evidence yet of a hate crime or an act of terrorism. Ireland will hold a national vote today to decide whether to uphold or repeal a pro-life amendment. A yes vote would repeal Ireland's Eighth Amendment, which protects the life of a baby as early as 12 weeks. 
Opinion polls show there is a slight lead to overturn the law, but that gap has narrowed in recent days. Official results are expected sometime Saturday, but exit polling may show the results today. The U.S. Ambassador at Large for International Religious Freedom tells CBN News that Pastor Andrew Brunson will be released from a Turkish prison. More than a year and a half ago, Turkish officials jailed Brunson on what many believe are false charges. Some of those charges include terrorism and espionage. Religious Freedom Ambassador Sam Brownback says President Trump is doing all he can to free the pastor from the worst prison in the country. One of them anyway. The administration continues to really push aggressively. There's a lot of discussion what the U.S. can and should do mm -hmm. uh, to, to press for his release in a more aggressive fashion. The president's raised it, the vice president's raised it, the secretary of state's raised it. Uh, but you know, it, it, Turkey's just taken a different attitude towards the United States uh, now, much more confrontational uh, with us. And, you know, I, I think we have to respond aggressively. Brownback says he believes Brunson will come home one day and he hopes people will continue to pray for his release. Pastors were circling the U.S. Capitol this week, but it wasn't for exercise. As Paul Strand reports, they were working to shape our nation. Some pastors are so heavenly minded, they think they and their congregation should have nothing to do with the world. But here in Washington, they're finding out why some say the world's business is actually heaven's business and why it should be theirs too. A group of pastors encouraged to get politically active at Watchmen on the Wall 2018 took one of their most influential weapons, prayer, right to the U.S. Capitol, circling it and praying all the way. They were praying God would shape the laws, the government, the culture, and the nation. Helping them to learn why they should get political and showing them how is David Barton of Wall Builders. He points out pastors were deeply involved in weighing in on and affecting the world's issues throughout most of history. This, this thing about pastors not being involved, that's the last 40, 50 years. That's not the previous 4,500 years, including 350 years of American history. So that's what's fun to show these guys because then they get liberated and, and feel like they're free to be able to address some things the Bible addresses. Back when I was in seminary, uh, we never talked about how to engage uh, in, the, in the culture like this. Uh, part of it might have been a, a fear uh, for getting in trouble somehow uh, with uh, saying things we shouldn't say, uh, get involved with, with activities that we should not. Uh, but I'll tell you, uh, it really is a new day. Barton took CBN News back to 1775. The British actually blamed the pastors for the American War for Independence. They named them the Black Robe Regiment because they wore those black robes. They accused them of being the cause of everything, and they were really right. When you look at the Declaration of Independence, every right set forth in the Declaration of Independence had been preached from the American pulpit by 1763. Pastors here were warned the midterms in 2018 could be just as crucial as the presidential race in 2016, and they and their congregations need to be involved in voting. Paul Strand, CBN News, Capitol Hill. Coming up, a White House initiative putting Christianity at the forefront. We hear from members of the president's advisory board to see how he is working to make a difference for the church. Following the opening of the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem, members of President Trump's Evangelical Advisory Board discussed the importance of a new executive order. As Chris Mitchell reports, it's one more sign of the growth of faith-based initiatives from the White House. I will soon be signing an executive order to create a faith initiative at the White House. The faith initiative will help design new policies that recognize the vital role of faith in our families, our communities, and our great country. The new executive order established the White House Faith and Opportunity Initiative, and members of President Trump's Evangelical Advisory Board told CBN News it could revolutionize the relationship between faith-based organizations throughout the federal bureaucracy. All departments that have faith offices and all federal offices will have a liaison appointed so that the departments along with the White House, the President's agenda, uh, can work together with several initiatives. There are initiatives, of course, religious freedom, um, reducing crime, prison reform, poverty, marriage and family, human sex trafficking, several others that are vitally important and on the heart of our president. His executive order is bringing it back to the White House where Barack Obama moved it over to the Department of Health and Human Services. And if you're not in the White House, frankly, you're just not where the action is. Reid explains how the move could potentially make a difference for people who need help. 
what we're really going to be doing is rallying the armies of faith and compassion that are caring for the poor, the marginalized, those in prison, those who have been left behind. The faith community has a lot to offer in that area and I, I commend the president for tapping into that resource. Ninety percent of all the homeless shelters in America are either operated by a church or a ministry or a faith-based organization. Uh, whenever there's a natural disaster, whether it's Operation Blessing or Salvation Army or the North American Home Mission Board of the Southern Baptist Convention or Catholic Charities, they're all right there on the front lines after a hurricane, after an earthquake, after wildfires, whatever it is, you know, just offering love and compassion to people who need it. Members of the Evangelical Advisory Board met with U.S. Ambassador David Friedman. Evangelicals and the Trump administration have forged a common bond. As you know, the evangelical community was very, very key on the election of President Trump and also very key in terms of uh, our prayer and our uh, being able to speak to the president, even regarding the movement of the embassy. We went to the Oval Office after his decision to thank the president for his bold action. And as I mentioned in the meeting, many came against the president, but he still did the right thing. And we are so honored to have a president who promises something and does what he promised. He is the most, as many people have said, uh, faith-friendly president that they have known in their lifetime. We had over 1,800 faith leaders come through the White House last year alone. I believe this year we will double or triple that. So he continues to reach out, first and foremost, to prayer. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Still ahead, the iconic hymn Amazing Grace, which has been recorded more than 100 times. Now we go inside a new exhibit dedicated to its writer, John Newton, after this. It's been recorded hundreds of times by Christian artists and pop stars alike. And no matter who you are, you've probably heard the hymn Amazing Grace. But who is behind the classic? Our Amber Strong takes us to an exhibit dedicated to that man. No matter the rendition Grace, or artist, that tune and those lyrics are easily recognizable. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. You know, churches all over the country will be singing this song on Sunday. And while you may know the song, do you really know the man behind the lyrics? John Newton is a pretty amazing story. Eileen Madrasso of DC's Museum of the Bible says behind the hopeful tune lies a dark story. He lived a pretty crazy life. He was pretty rebellious. That was until the longtime sailor experienced a rough night at sea. It was in those moments that he actually started to understand how precious life is and, and the decisions that he had made were really, really just not a good way to to live his life. Although he gave his life to Christ, Newton became a slave ship captain, a practice generally accepted at the time by Christians and much of society. It was during those times, though, that he actually started to think differently about humanity. After a health crisis, Newton left the ships, but not his involvement with slavery. It's something he would wrestle with for many years. He eventually joined the Church of England and began writing songs. He wrote quite a few with another hymn writer, William Cowper, and they collected them together in the only hymn book. And that's where we actually see the hymn Amazing Grace recorded for the first time in, in print. Newton once said his heart shuddered over his time with slavery. I think of um, the first part, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. It's reflective of uh, in Romans, the book of Romans, where it says, wretched man that I am in, in Romans chapter seven. And he knew that about himself. While the words only resonated with a few at the time, they spoke loudly to his friend, abolitionist William Wilberforce. Newton's confession to Wilberforce, as portrayed in the 2006 film Amazing Grace, changed the course of history. I wish I could remember all their names. My. 20,000 ghosts, they all have names. Beautiful African names. After Newton's encouragement, Wilberforce would successfully push for the end of England's slave trade in 1807. You must use it. Names, ship's records, ports, people, everything I remember 
is in here. Although my memory is fading, I remember two things very clearly. I'm a great sinner and Christ is a great Savior. And then the song took off. Twas grace that From the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement, to Secretaries of State, and even a former U.S. President. Its message of hope in the face of sorrow remains steadfast. So much so, artists like Judy Collins and Aretha Franklin have all put their spin on it. Each version is on display here at the museum. It's pretty neat to actually look at all the different album covers where you have different uh, colorings and designs, graphic design that speak to each of the genres and each of the artists. Madrasso says the idea of grace and hope is something that resonates across genres, culture, and time. Amber Strong, CBN News, at the Museum of the Bible. And welcome back. We're following several entertainment headlines for you this hour. We begin with the summer box office. The season brings blockbuster films with big Hollywood stars, and now you can add Pope Francis to the list. His Holiness makes an appearance in the family movie Beyond the Sun. It's a modern-day tale of hope, faith, and courage based on stories from the Bible, and it features a group of young children who embark on a journey to discover God. Studio 5 has your first look. This stuff is useless! I told you guys that God does not exist and he's never there when you need him! I denied him because I was afraid. But now I realize it was a good thing that he was there. Guys, come on! We made it! Beyond the Sun is available now on multiple platforms including iTunes and Amazon. Our next headline of entertainment comes from the makers of the children's movie Snow Dogs. They've changed one of the film's scenes in response to complaints from parents and children's groups. Critics say the scenes groom children for sexual exploitation. Some theaters actually pulled the film, but the filmmakers have now revised it for viewing in theaters this holiday weekend. A movie spokesperson tells CBN News we apologize to anybody who feels the original version of Show Dogs sent an inappropriate message. In our final entertainment headline, if you're looking to jumpstart your weekend with a good movie, our friends at Plugged In Online are taking a look at the newest Star Wars movie, Solo. The movie Solo, a Star Wars story, follows the adventures of a young Han Solo. I'm a driver. He barely escapes his grungy, crime-ridden home planet of Corellia. He goes to war as a grunt in the Empire's army. He stumbles across a group of smugglers and their wily leader. If you come with us, you're in this life for good. And he's almost ripped apart by a half-starved Wookiee. <laughs> but that's nothing for a guy like Han. He specializes in small-time thievery and big-time trouble. You think everything sounds like a bad idea. He's smart, he's reckless, and he's determined to keep moving toward his big plan. I waited a long time for a shot like this. And if you watch closely... I got a really good feeling about this. You might see him become the galaxy's greatest pilot if he doesn't get himself killed first. Since when do you know how to fly? <laughs> 190 years old? <laughs> you look great! Fans who cut their teeth on the original Star Wars trilogy will very likely appreciate what director Ron Howard has done with his prequel to Star Wars Episode IV. It's a tale that spins, soars, and blasts like a Millennium Falcon. That said, there's lots of fairly violent peril here for parents and kids to navigate. Han himself is an anchorless scalawag, and there is some mild profanity and innuendo in the mix. So I'll give Solo a Star Wars story, three and a half smuggler shootouts out of five for family friendliness. For more on this film or anything else at your local box office, visit us at PluggedIn.com. Plugging you into the movies? I'm Bob Olszewski for Focus on the Family's Plugged In Movie Review. Time now for your Friday Faithful. As we begin this Memorial Holiday weekend, we leave you with this Friday Faithful message. In all that God is calling you to do, He is also calling you to rest. Take time and make time to rest. With that word, be sure to make this a Faithful Friday and a great rest of the weekend. God is calling us all to rest. Be sure to do it. 
That is going to do it for this edition of CBN Newswatch. Remember, you can always find more of our exclusive coverage of the issues you care most about at CBNNews.com. And take the time to tell us what you think about the stories you've seen here today or any day. You can do that by emailing newswatch at CBN.com. And of course, you can always reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We'd love to hear from you. Hope you'll join us again right here next time. Have a fabulous Friday and a wonderful holiday weekend.